lot more um, opportunity uh, to tell stories and and inform our inform our guests at, at the Capitol. So we'll we'll start looking at that. Um, I'm going to walk through that with Patrick, who's who's here as well, and I'm going to ask him to just sort of say hello and introduce himself and his role. Oh, sorry. Hi, uh, Patrick McMahon with uh, Dimensional Innovations. I'm the uh, technology producer. So uh, my role is to help assist Nigel and the team on kind of taking the ideas and designs and bringing them to fruition. So I help with them on the UI, UX, and kind of coordination on the development and any of the programming for any activations and applications for this uh, experience. And real quick, Patrick, sorry, just so everybody knows, um, Rihanna sent out the file stage link to this if you do want to pull it up on your computer and follow along. Yeah, Thank that, you. that'd be great. Thanks. Um, and then, uh, you know, John um, uh, Perez, uh, he's been helping us um, all, all along the way here. So he's involved in, in all the tech elements too at the Capitol. So he'll, he'll hear his voice uh, bouncing in from time to time as we walk through this, uh, through this deck. Hello. Good morning. And then uh, we're also going to spend a little time on on wayfinding, but we'll do it inside this time. Um, and uh, um, Ian's, Ian's Ian's on board here to to help us walk through uh, those elements um, as we get to that part of the meeting. Um, it's it's like three hours, so you folks let me know when we need to take a, a pause if you need to, and we'll we're glad to do that. Um, there's a lot to go through, but I feel fine that we'll be able to re, uh, get through the through the, the meat of, of the presentation today. So if everybody's ready, we can we can jump in. I can share my screen. Okay. All right. So I'm I'm hoping that everybody can see the that blue uh, title page. And if so, we'll get started. Uh, uh, like I said, we're gonna start with the informational kiosks. Uh, the content and user experience of how those things are going to shape um, new wayfinding sign types that have evolved from our, our wayfinding uh, tour um, about a month ago, I guess. Um, um, there is still some outstanding wayfinding questions that we want to uh, want to see if we can get some answers to. Uh, not a lot, but a few that we'd like to resolve that will help us to move this forward. And then finally, some naming recommendations for different spaces within the within the Capitol Square facilities um, that uh, that we need to make a choice on, make a selection on, so we can add that to places in the wayfinding, for example. All right, starting with the content and user experience, the interactive design element, and we're focusing primarily today on the on what used to be called the wayfinding kiosks, but uh, we're now referring to as the informational kiosks because they they uh, inhabit a lot more content. And we'll we'll talk about what that is as we move through the deck. Um, a couple of definitions that I think might be helpful for people that are less familiar with this process than uh, than, than Patrick and John are. Um, the sitemap, we're going to be looking at a bunch of sitemaps and wireframes. So let me just read these definitions. As a sitemap, it's a it's a blueprint of a site. It's a guide for what the web design and develop, uh, for the web design development process. They use it from that side, but it, for you, it maps out the site's pages and it shows their hierarchy, the relationship to each other. It demonstrates how a user will navigate through the site to arrive at a specific content um, by just defining where that content lives. So you just kind of follow the path and that's that's how the pages construct all the content and understanding the sitemap gives you a sense of where that content lives in relationship to the, the homepage, for example, starting here on the on the left, all the way down to the detail of, of one individual page that might be you know three clicks down. Um, a wireframe is it, it, it for all the world looks like a design web page, but it's not. It's a kind of a graphic outline of a web page. It includes an over, overview of the of the structure of the page, which which is just a basic layout. It got the gives you that informational hierarchy, uh, helps you understand what the user flow and functionality would be, and what the sort of intended interactions are, what kind of buttons are, what the choices are, the links that might be involved in that. So um, this only a, this only gives you kind of a cursory uh, glimpse at what the, the graphics might look like. Um, because of that, we have included like three or four um, look and feel pages in here just to give you a sense of what uh, a, what a wireframe might actually look like as a web page, uh, just to help you understand how those translate from the from a wireframe to an actual uh, working website um, document. 
All right, so we'll start with the first wireframe, uh, which is a complete sitemap for the whole informational chaos. We'll have separate wireframes for some of the uh, secondary uh, destinations, um, but let's start with the big picture. Um, we'll, uh, when you walk up to it right now, it just says welcome um, on the screens in the Capitol building right now. We're, we're adding more uh, kiosks throughout the building, but in the ones that exist right now, it just says welcome. And that doesn't give you a really good hint as to what's possible with that kiosk. So we're going to change that into a dashboard, which will show you the four critical things that you can access um, from that kiosk. Um, those four things will be the content, the primary content of, of this website for, a, what's a better term? Is it website or what would you call it? Microsoft? Application. An application, let's call it an application. So the content for the application are, there's four different spots. Find your destination, find your meeting, which is an events directory, explore a history, which is about points of interest and, uh, and interpretive content and find government officials, which is about finding future and past uh, government officials, whether it's a portrait in a hall on a composite or where the uh, where a particular representative might have their have their office um, and desk. Um, also on the page will be rotating content, um, which would be like a streamer of news that runs across the bottom of the uh, of the uh, of the display. Um, in addition to that, that would be a place where we can also uh, include emergency alerts. So I don't know whether anywhere from you left your lights on to there's a tornado run for your lives. Um, and then the, the fixed content will be also on there. And some of that's already on there today. It's like date and time and weather, but also what's your what's the um, current Wi-Fi uh, password, things like that. And those will always be on the dashboard. So um, already we're giving you a lot more from that kiosk just by walking up to it than we have currently. So let's say you walk up to it and maybe this is a good time to kind of look at what a look and feel for that dashboard might be. Um, so let's, let's pretend this kiosk is down in the extension and it's near the statues. So because of that, the, the, the point of interest story will focus on the statue of, of Esther, just down the hall from where you're sitting right now. And <clears throat> a button to get to that content will be right there on the dashboard. Also, find your destination for, those, uh, for the building directory, find your meeting for the meeting directory, find government officials, as we just described. That's the ticker across the bottom. And across the top, that's the, that's the locked uh, fixed content that will always be on there. Um, any questions about this just basic look and feel? All right. <laughs> I mean, I'll <laughs> say I like it for what it's worth. Agree. Oh, that's, hey, that's worth a lot. I'll take it. I love it. Uh, <laughs> down at the bottom, you'll see a little red thing <laughs> popped up. So that's like that's an emergency alert, but it's not like life threatening. So I don't know what that would be, you know. Um, auto rescinded, you left your lights on, uh, something like that. Or um, if if it's if it's more urgent, like there's a swarm of locusts, then you take over the whole screen and you've got this emergency alert thing that pops up. The, you'll have that functionality as a way to communicate to the uh, to the visitors in the capital if issues like that become uh, become important to communicate. So that's that's kind of a look and feel experiment on the kiosk dashboard. Go ahead, hold, hold that for just a second, Nigel. Go ahead. Yeah. It's just look, look and feel, but and try to think about maintaining this. Across the bottom, you have a lot of information about house and recess, budget hearing, plus phone. Does that manually? I'm assuming that manually has to be updated. So we have to have somebody consistently monitoring and maintaining this pretty much on a daily basis. I would think during the session would be a lot more work, but I was just thinking about ongoing cost. Um, that's, yes, it would, it would need to be ma maintained and it's, it's up to you what level of, uh, Urgency, those those no, notices are whether it's something that does need to be updated daily, or if it's notices that are set for a whole session, or for that are true for that month. Um, it's entirely up to you. Yeah, and you know that news 
the bottom information, you know, not even just the emergency, but just the regular notifications, we can also have that on a schedule. So like maybe it is something that's weekly, like a weekly notice, or maybe it's a monthly and, and so on. We can have it on a schedule to where um, it pops up and then re gets removed after that set schedule to, uh, timestamp. Um, so there could be no information maybe that's super applicable at this minute and maybe you know this 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 section is blank or we kind of disappear it when there's not actually anything out there to put out of notes um so it's something for your team to just to be able to just put out little notes and of nuggets of information um so if a certain room or something's closed or there's construction in this area or parking needs to be adjusted it's uh just ways to kind of put general information out to the public as needed um and manage however your team might be, uh, feel is best but it's something that we can maintain ourselves correct yes uh, go ahead. Madam chairman go ahead yeah I'm, I'm just wondering why why can't you just link this to the the uh current entities that provide information you know during the session so you don't have one person trying to gather it from them and input it into this. Why can't it all be just linked together some way? Uh, it, it it could be. We would need to identify what those sources are. So we would obviously I need to work with your team to identify, you know, if there is some type of notification system that is used currently, we would need to understand and work with your team to figure out what that is, where the sources are and how we can pull those feeds in. So that absolutely is absolutely uh, possible. So we can do a combination of pulling in information as well as you adding additional information into the CMS as well. And it seems that a whole lot of it is already available on the legislative website. Is that what you have additional comments? Yeah, Madam Chairman, um, some of these would be manual announcements and they're ones we actually have wanted to be able to add. Everyone always comes up and wants to know when the house is coming back in session, when they're in recess. So this is functionality that we wanted to add and we would have staff, either our IT staff or session staff to run that. I think on the executive branch side, we would need to identify whether it would be um, Lori, for example, um, down in, in that office or whether the governor's office probably would have access. There'd probably be a, a group of people who would have administrative rights um to certain types of announcements that would be the ad hoc and then as di said others could be scheduled correct all right okay so if you uh, uh moving on if you selected find your destination which is the building sort of interior navigation maps and directories um, <clears throat> um Patrick, do you kind of walk us through how this is set up? Because it also includes like a, a search function too, right? Yeah, so this is going to be the, the wayfinding map feature of the, the capital space. So you're going to see a very similar layout um, in regards to that mapping feature that kind of currently exists. We have kind of placeholder images, but obviously the look and feel of the final map will be determined at a later level. Um, but what you can do is you will see the different sections. So everything from both the Herschler building, the capital extension, as well as the garden uh, level, level one, two, and three, we'll be able to provide um, different views of each of those uh, floors, as well as um, specific um, rooms, points of interest, uh, identifying offices, uh, entrances, ADA, um, the stairs, and anything else that might be applicable for users to kind of understand what their, what is, in the, the, the floor or in the hallway, or the ability to find um, a specific office or department as needed. So one thing we will have is a search feature. So the search feature will give you the ability to kind of, we'll have a, a map view, but you'll also have kind of a, a list view as well. So you will see here on the left-hand side, um, the ability to tab through where it says buildings, levels, navigation, you'll be able to tab through the different levels in buildings. So you, you'll see all, um, all five on the, the left-hand side. Um, on the map, this image here, again, is just for placeholder. Um, as we get further into the, the process, we'll actually work on those designs of, of what that final map actually looks like. Um, you'll be able to see kind of pinch and zoom and find a tap on a room and kind of get more information on what that what that is, um, as well as kind of 
finding a list view of all the offices and departments as they're located across uh, the campus. So on the left hand side, you will see a search uh, and find a room, which is kind of the magnifying glass. Um, do you want to tab over real quick? Yeah, I think there's one or two more. It's and just of, real quickly, I believe we do now have uh, co-chair Landon online. So oh, welcome. Are you here? Can you hear us? Well, I can. And uh, my apologies for being a little bit late. Uh, Nigel, good to see you and members of the committee. Uh, I failed to pass my FBI background check. And <laughs> we've been working on that this morning. Uh, anyway, it's good to see everybody. Uh, okay. Sorry, I couldn't well, be there in person. I definitely want to hear more about that, but <laughs> <laughs> let's. <laughs> um, we were just kind of walking through um, how the how the wayfinding site works. Yeah, yeah, so this is just the high level view. So as you tap into a specific level, so on the next page, I think we're going and showing the uh, go to the gold colored one. Oh, sorry. You'll see the capital extension has been kind of selected. So that's going to pull you into a tighter view with more detailed information of those rooms, specific layouts of the hallways, offices, stairs, bathrooms, um, anything else that we kind of apply. Well, we will have kind of a map key on the, the right hand side to kind of indicate uh, the differences between um, any of those um, items that are kind of in, will be pinpointed on the map. Um, and then we will provide the search feature as well. So if you want to jump down to the next tab, uh, one more. So this would be kind of the search feature. So on the right hand side, you will see kind of in an accordion style menu, a list of anything that we have that's findable in the in the map. So whether it's a room, an office, um, a desk, you know, we this is where it'll be kind of contained. And as on the, you can kind of search through all of them as needed, but on the left-hand side, as you start typing in a specific department or office, it will filter down. So if you were to type in uh, just meeting, then it will start filtering down anything that's labeled as meeting. So it'll start removing anything that isn't necessarily a meeting room or anything that includes the word meeting. So it's a way to help isolate and get things a little bit more narrowed down for everybody. Um, so if you were to type in department, you'll probably see all the meeting rooms disappear and we'll have kind of a listing of all the different departments and where their offices might be located. Um, so it's a help. Basically, we're just kind of trying to work ways to kind of help get users with a broad sense that they're looking for something narrowed down to exactly what they're looking for. I think some, some real quick feedback is that the font under map key and then the level selection on the left is real small. Um, the, the map on the right-hand side. Yes, like that's a great example. Like the mm -hmm. map, the, 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 the map doesn't seem so bad, but the font yeah. on, for example, under the map key and whatnot. Right here, yeah. It's pretty large on our screen and it's still real small. Yeah, absolutely understood. And that's something we definitely will uh, make considerations of. Um, as we get into more of the DD level, we'll also provide some ADA functionality, which is we can scale up uh, fonts that will provide the ability to scale up font size or do color contrasts um, in other functions for people that have different needs. Um, so what you see here is definitely not final. Everything is just for kind of, we've kind of taken a step um, to provide more than just wireframe, but to give a little more context. So we will definitely be spending time to kind of fine tuning the fonts and the styles um, and working out any any other details in the design uh, on the next few stages. Yeah. Yeah, Madam Chairman. Go ahead. Is, and and is, anyone jump in at any time, please. Is there a possibility of putting a, a magnifier feature in that? I know when I do a, uh, a, uh, a PDF presentation, uh, I can uh, I can hit a button on my on my uh, my uh, remote and it'll you know like blow up a section of the screen that I'm on and so if you if you want to read something you can just get that it blows that up and then you can see what it is and and then uh, your your font is just magnified about four four or five times. <laughs> 
Yes, absolutely. Um, that is something we can definitely uh, look into. And I think that's what would be part of that ADA um, consideration okay. in the next phase. So, so what I'm thinking from an ADA standpoint is we'll probably have some type of like sub menu in a corner somewhere, which will have the ability to provide ways to make things larger and smaller as needed. Um, but as for kind of a magnifying glass or like a pinch and zoom type thing, um, absolutely, that, that's something that we can definitely kind of add to um, things for us to kind of look into. Are, are these things touch touch screens? Yes. Okay. So if somebody wanted to see what one of those little squares were and they couldn't read it, you could just touch it. It would blow up the square and you'd see. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And our intent is we still will provide the wayfinding pathway. So again, we will have eight kiosk locations, correct? I think it's eight or nine. Eight or nine, yeah. Um, so we will have it dedicated to where when you click on a specific uh, building or room, office, um, and then you're looking for directions, we'll provide wayfinding directions so that it'll give you kind of step-by-step -step kind of directions of exactly kind of where you need to go up the stairs. We'll provide kind of visuals of um, taking the elevator and then going to floor two or something like that. So that will be included in this as well is kind of providing the, the user step-by-step -step directions of the pathway they need to get from one building to the next. I think very much. I think the ADA accommodations sound great, but I would also make the standard um, thinking of all levels of eyesight. And yeah. so if, if there's room to have larger fonts in just the standard mode, we should maximize those yeah. font size. Absolutely. No problem. Yeah. And that'll be part of our vetting process that, yeah. All right. So, um, I mean, to, to get a sense of how this works, it's very similar to how your current wayfinding works. Um, um, and the addition here is that we're also adding Herschler and refining that experience. So, all right. Um, so if you then tap on event directory at that dashboard scene, um, you have a, a find your meeting function, uh, which starts with a calendar of events, which kind of lists all the current events and allows you to drill down to specific meetings um, and get the information for each one of those meetings. Um, here we've got, sorry, Patrick, I just kept going. Yeah, no, so this is just kind of the, uh, kind of a, a list view of all the meetings, uh, you know, that are going on for that day or future meetings kind of coming up. So on the left-hand side, you will see a few filters. Um, we do have the ability to filter for today's meetings or tomorrow's meetings, and we can also work to define what those filters are. So maybe it's, uh, maybe there's a third option, which is next week's or next month's meetings. We don't necessarily have to show every single meeting that's scheduled. We can kind of work with you on the different amounts of filters, but we definitely want to be able to provide them at least to narrow down today um, so they can kind of sort through a, a full list if there's more than you know, 10, 15, 20 different events. So the middle section will um, be that full kind of list view of all those meetings. So you'll see on the right hand side, there's a scroll bar. So this can scroll and continues to scroll throughout the different meetings that have been selected. Um, you'll see for each meeting, we obviously will provide um, the title subject of the meeting, the dates um, that it's scheduled with that timestamp of the meeting, um, room location, and then obviously any uh, notes, uh, description of the meeting of what's take, taking place um, in that. And this is just kind of the card view of that meeting. When we click into it, we'll provide a larger one. Oops. Oh, go back. Go back, sorry. There you go. Um, so you'll go into a larger one. Um, but one thing we also do, while we are filtering by today or tomorrow or next week, we also on the right hand side are providing um, filters of different options as well. So if we want to tag specific meetings that are related to um, strictly legislative or other branches, um, different departments, we can find a way to kind of tag those so you can kind of sort through them. So if you were to click on today's meeting, that would be everything. But if you clicked on maybe this tab on the right hand side is legislative, then it would filter down to just something relative to legislative, legislative um, as well as um, 
any non-governmental so if it's like more public meetings we can provide kind of and work with your team with your group on what those categories might be um to kind of provide some more filters for users to kind of sort through all that list so if you go to the next slide you will just kind of get a, a rough idea you know of what i'm kind of talking of is you know if we're clicking on this tab it just sorts it down so let's just say this is a senate meeting and then we can kind of break it out from the house meetings and other other kind of categories yeah and this on the left hand side we is just kind of showing um again uh just kind of the filtering down so if we have all meetings selected as well as a filter um you know we can kind of show the full list of everything today or it can be all meetings for the house committee um throughout the next week as well so there's a lot of different ability on this to kind of provide this kiosk a lot of flexibility for users to kind of organize the the meetings and and then in in addition um, at, at any stage where a meeting is listed there's the ability to tap on the location and it'll take you to them to the map function so it'll show you how to get to that map so you see if you see a list of a meeting and and this third meeting down here is the one you're looking for you can tap on this room location and it would take you to the map, map function of the of the kiosk and walk you right to that room I, so on that one, um, pros, cons to having a searchable feature. So under the building map, we had it where the user could do type in a search query. Um, and I, I guess I'm just op open to the discussion about, do we want to offer that same search query in the event directory? yeah we we definitely can i think we would need to identify what what the search is looking for whether it's searching just the title or if it's searching through just like something in the description um the search in the meeting could be potentially a little vague on like where typing in more of a room is a little bit more straightforward but we can absolutely uh add you know typing in to search for something so like if there, a user was to come in and just look for uh, <laughs> energy uh, meeting or something like that. Uh, we could kind of sort and filter down to anything maybe that contains within either the subject, the headline, or a word in the description that references energy. We can kind of sort by that way as well. No, no, I appreciate that consideration. I, I think about a user who's here for the first time. And they're like, I'm showing up today because I'm passionate about energy, right? I don't know if it's a legislative meeting or a public meeting or if it's a department meeting. I just know I'm here because it's a topic that's important to me, right? And so I'm not saying that like we need it or we don't need it. I just wanted to open it up for conversation about does it make the user experience more accessible? I think having our, our staff that update the schedules, if, if we can do some keywords. Yes. Like, I think that would almost like hashtags or, you know, from a legislative standpoint, I could say, because I mean, often I do this. Okay, well, I know my bill has been assigned to ag. What, when is the next ag meeting? You know, and when there's 50 meetings listed in the middle of session, it would be nice to be able to search ag because it could be, you know, five well, days from now, right? So yeah, that could, that I could, I could see some value in that. Yeah. Now, that does mean somebody has a responsibility to make sure that you use words within that description or title that that would fit in possible search parameters that someone might put in there. So if 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 you're looking for ag, but they don't use the word ag in the description or the title, but that's what it's about, then that result wouldn't appear and it might make you feel like there is no meeting. So that's that would be a caution there, I suppose. Okay, points of interest. So that fourth button on the right, um, as I said, it, the, the, the lead story, like the cover page would be about whatever the kiosk was closest to. If it was a statue or it was a collection of composites or it was the rotunda, um, then that would be the lead story. But 
it allows you to dig deeper into other stories of a historical or interpretive nature. Um, so we start with that landing page, which shows you that nearby floor highlight. And then there's a list view of those other, uh, other adjacent stories. Uh, Patrick, anything else I'm not covering here before we move on to the looks? No, yeah, I, this is just kind of our way to kind of organize uh, the different uh, items and uh, places of interest around the campus, um, providing the ability to kind of filter and sort through some of these things so we can kind of provide the user uh, more information, more accessibility and knowledge of uh, about the, the point of interest and where they can kind of go find to see it. So this is, for example, what that might look like on that first, uh, when you first tap on that uh, uh, page um, with that lead story um, up front, it includes a carousel of images if those are available, a headline, um, a description, uh, the, the interpretive content, um, which you can dive deep into um, or, or look at adjacent stories and start to explore. Yeah, so from this one, like Nigel mentioned, so if this if you're look if you're at the kiosk in the extension uh, extension area, we can kind of uh, identify those items that are relevant to that location. So we can kind of pull forward, um, like in these three examples um, that are relative to that person in that space. So they might actually just look up and kind of see that just down the hall, um, but they'll have the full ability to also see all the different points of interest across the space as well. Um, so we do have. Uh, the view all button and then that, that does also pull up a full list type view so it's just showing all the different uh points of interest across all the buildings and floors uh throughout the capital um very similar to our sorting of like the the map and sorting of like of the meetings we have filters again on the left hand side so it's kind of identifying and sorting down um from the different floors and buildings on the right hand side, we also have filters by type. So identifying them um, if they're um, relative to historic rooms, statues, activations, arts and paintings, portrait uh, composites, sort uh, public meeting rooms, et cetera. Again, those final filters can we can kind of work with your team if there are more or if there are different uh, terms, we can kind of identify what those groupings actually are. So very similar where as you kind of tap on a filter or sort by a floor you can go to the next page i have a question and i'll try to ask it in an understandable way um i like i this looks great in my view the content and the stories are they going to be sort of the same content that lives at each of these points of interest, but all in one place? Or is it going to be different or expanded? Or like, for example, is a featured highlight, the Four Sisters, and we have the same interpretive stuff here that we will up at the Four Sisters. Um, or, or is this gonna be, you know, for example, new content that isn't necessarily displayed elsewhere. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. Um, uh, you're, you're saying that, that if the kiosk is talking about something that we're also talking about in, on interpretive panels, will that be the uh, duplicate copy or duplicate content in both those locations? Yeah. Um, and I, I think the intent is to take a fresh perspective on the, on that particular item, if it's spoken about in two places, so that you see it from a unique angle. So some other some other vantage point on the statues, for example, might be focused on. There'll be some redundant type of material because we're talking about the same thing. Um, so there's 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 truth about that thing that you can't avoid. Um, but but I, I think there's an intent to make something fresh in there so you, you're not just reading the same thing. The goal here is also for people that don't make it up to the, the third floor to see a close-up of the, of the statues uh, to, to learn something about them without even having to go up there. 
then I also assume this could be a place to sort of add things or add really interesting stories that we're not necessarily interpreting in writing elsewhere. Yeah. yeah. For example, the, well, yeah, I can't think of anything. Um, the churn spindle. I don't know if we're interpreting the churn spindle or not, but like if you don't, if you don't have a docent, you don't hear about that. Yeah, so. and we don't actually have a panel right next to the the turn spindle, so you have to. I think the story about that is happening in, in the garden level, along with other sort of architectural oddities. Um, so you to, to to see that on on the kiosk, which is actually closer to the the actual turn spindle, spindle would be would be great. Thank you, Madam. And the other um, purpose that these will serve is similar to finding your event or finding your government officials office is they will help you navigate to that actual location. So it'll have the same map it button um, because we'll have again, if a docent's right there, great. But if they're like, where again did they say that I go find the upside down spindle and you're at a kiosk, you can map to it. Madam Chairman, um, I have a question about the kiosk at the entry of the Capitol. Typically, when people come in at that point, they are looking for a meeting or directions to a specific office. If, um, if there is somebody there reading all about the Four Sisters, I wondered if that would not be the best place for a um, historic a, a kiosk with interesting information about you know the buildings in the state of Wyoming, but rather limit it to directional information, which is is what they have specifically in in a lot of cases when they first come in the front door. Did I ask that correctly? <laughs> Yeah, I, I totally get the question, and, and it's a and it's a good one. Um, um, bear in mind also that there'll be there'll be static wayfinding in the entry as well, so that would help guide people that were in a rush to find something. But you're you're right. If someone's parked in front of that kiosk, spending time learning about the four sisters and the spurn turn spindle, um, what does that mean for for the person that's standing behind them trying to find their meeting? What's what's the general consensus on on that access level of accessibility, especially at that at that primary point of entry? I I think there's a couple options. I think um, I think that's a good thing to bring up. I don't know if there's any option where we can remove the interpretation during the session. I mean, I hate to not have it on there at all because there are months where where nobody's standing there right and I I do um and this is not at all brushing off the concern but but I do have some faith that if somebody's parked there reading about the four sisters and there's three people queuing behind them like move, move along <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know that there'll be some sense of that but you know there's always um but yeah I, I feel like I feel like it's something to consider um, also, also bear in mind that we are, we're conscious of of the time spent in front of of these type of exhibits and not putting content on there that you'd you'd, you'd be more comfortable sitting in your recliner at home reading because of the length of it. It's um, th there'll be there'll be substantive content here, but not to the point that you'd spend more than three to five minutes at it at the most, right? Yeah. Um, there might be QR codes that allow you to dig deeper, take your smartphone device out and, oh, this is interesting, I want to learn more, scan that, and then start to wander around the rotunda while you learn that, and then leave the kiosk to the next person. So we're not going to put content on a kiosk that anchors someone to that location for more than three to five minutes, I shouldn't think. Patrick, do you think that's sort of the right time framing? Yeah, I, I believe so. I mean, I think every once in a while you might get someone that's just kind of thumbing through it and taking their time. But uh, I think a lot of people, especially during session, they're there for a specific uh, reason and they just are looking to find where they need to get to go. And, um, but the, I, you know, there's quite a few kiosks and a lot of this will also be kind of in a, a mobile format as well. So we should be able to, you know, we can provide a 
QR code that they can scan that's not the kiosk so they can jump on it and if in case the kiosk is being used. Well, and I'm confident that we are not doing away with our paper meeting notices either. So there will be those. Okay. If you have a gorger standing at the uh, the kiosk. <laughs> yeah, that wants to read, click absolutely everything. Yeah. Um, so let's let's keep moving uh, through here. The, the the CMS will give you a lot of functionality as to um, making adjustments. So whatever kind of image that you want, it'll be able to accommodate. Uh, the proportions of that. So this, these these couple of look and feels kind of gives you a sense of of how it can it can scale in proportion to the to the content you want to put on there with with a fair bit of flexibility. Um, now, if we dig into elected officials, find your government official takes you to um, this site map, um, which is organized. <coughs> um, I don't know, Patrick, if you want to walk through this is, yeah. Um... So this is the section to kind of really, we wanted to kind of look at it a few different ways. Um, one is obviously current uh, representatives and senators as, as well as elected officials. Uh, we also wanted to use this as a way to showcase, you know, those that have served in the past. Those that are people that are coming in to maybe look at, um, you know, their old uncle and grandpa or somebody then that the history to, Kind of see and learn about um, their time in the legislature or where their uh, paint, their portrait in the composite might be located. So we obviously have the, the sections here um, on the left hand, far left hand side. Uh, each one will provide a gallery view or a, a state map view of um, relative to their section, and particularly the current representatives and senators. We looked at this as the ability for someone that's coming in, particularly the, the capital for the first time, that maybe they're looking to find their representative and where they're they're located. And maybe they actually don't know who their representative is. So one thing we are providing is kind of a, a state map view indicating um, based on the counties uh, and the districts who their representative may be. So they can obviously identify who may, maybe they need to reach out to to talk to about their, their issue or their question. Um, and then obviously for all of the individuals, um, we'll be writing just the standard uh, information of you know their title, office name, uh, party service, um, and then contact information. Um, and we can kind of work with your team on what exactly that information, the final information might be. So obviously if it's including office information or at the Capitol or office information at their uh, local, office, uh, we can kind of provide a lot of information for them. So yeah, so this is the, will be kind of the grid view. So clicking in, you'll kind of, um, we'll have very similar filters on the left hand side. Again, um, view all on all government officials, but also filtering down. Sorry, we have a question from the room. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to understand, what's the legislator database? That, that's one of the items, just curious. Yeah, the legislative database, that is kind of information on uh, the current Wyoming uh, database of, I think, kind of a history of all elected officials. Um, and it's just kind of like a little database that goes back throughout all the years. So you can almost like type in and search for a name. If you typed in Smith, you might get 15 different Smiths throughout the, the last it's 100 years. By LSO is my understanding. Currently, I mean, you can go and do this on their website right now. Yeah, yeah. So, so I guess a little bit of context for everybody. And if you get a chance to go to the existing kiosks, this um, this was kind of a pilot project within the legislative branch when it first got going a few years ago. So it's only populated with legislative information. And what this project will do will expand it to include executive branch meetings, executive branch officials, um, Herschler building occupants. So it basically expands it so that it's state government wide within the Capitol Square. So what is feeding, for example, current legislator information now is from our website. It's just from a SQL server and it's a little API. We also have something called the le former legislator database. And it is populated on our website going back, I believe, to statehood with every member who's ever served. And so we've had some discussions as your internal team about how we can replicate that over time 
for um, the statewide elected officials. And we understand the Secretary of State's website, um, Madam Auditor told us in a meeting yesterday that that is actually maintained through Wyoming Blue Books, but there may be some content development that is needed as part of this project um, to populate that or for it to be populated over time if it's something that the executive branch would like to have. And, and then my, my other question is, are we using this particular page, finding an official for both finding out just information about official state of uh, elected officials and finding their offices because representatives and senators don't have offices. And I think, you know, outside the session, most of the people coming here are looking for executive branch offices. So it just seems like, I don't know if you just need two different pages, but it seems like that's going to be, <laughs> you're using this page to find Spice office. <laughs> Because you have a meeting, I think you're going to be going to the executive branch. Yeah, Madam Chair, we had discussed that for legislators, we would have a caveat when you filter it to legislative information, some sort of caveat that would say during session, you can find them by going to the House and Senate lobbies, and then here's their district information. And then when it would pull up for the elected officials, it would give their working office location as well as their potentially their ceremonial that's yet to be developed. I mean, it's a lot of question, but you've got over here the executive branch. It talks about a lot of just executive branch agencies, not elected officials. And I'm, so we're we using this page to find if you wanted to go to the Department of Revenue, are you going to this page to find their office or is there? I missed that. I thought it was for the. Yeah, I guess. I, yeah, I guess that's a good question. Good, good catch, Betsy, because, oh, I. I did not anticipate that we would have any agency information on these kiosks, but is that is that the plan or or should we or is that already sort of captured in wayfinding find your destination. Yeah, that's in the yeah that would all be in the find your destination feature. Okay, here. but I yeah. think the issue is currently they're all listed under. Um, on the on page. Sorry, sorry, 30. They are all listed in the site map for elected officials in the upper right hand corner. So, Madam Chairman, every agency in the state is listed under any elected official, whether it's in the Capitol Square complex or not. No, I think what we're saying is under the elected officials, we should really just. I think our thought was that it would just be the five electeds and then those actual departments yeah. were not we're not featuring directors or anything those departments shouldn't be here, they should just be in the find find your location. Oh, good catch yes yeah thanks yeah. for bringing that up Betsy. So, yeah. so, so there's a directory, a state directory of all agencies in the find your location. Correct. Area. Whereas this section is more the see, see who is elected and has ever been elected. Good. Could you have a link on this if somebody comes in there and they're looking at an executive thing and, and they're and wanting to find the Department of Revenue or the Department of Ag or something? Could you have a link that would drive into that so they don't have to wonder where they're going to go? Yeah, I think that's on the main page in the find your location, uh, in the find your location track, basically, once you push that. Yeah, yeah, correct. So you, you guys, uh, you, jumped ahead, you jumped ahead of us, but uh, you're on the right path. Um, so let me, uh, yeah, actually go ahead and skip to a profile. Yeah, so this is kind of our intent here is, you know, the kind of information of a specific profile. Again, we would provide their title, um, uh, just a, maybe a small bio description, um, their office information, you know, whatever information that might be. Our intent is to also, you know, if they have an office or a room location of where they are, we would provide that uh, listed here so you could kind of click on it to be able to go and get, it'll jump to the kind of the map to provide you the map finding information. So. If it is somebody with the Department of Revenue, um, it would indicate, you know, 
room number or whatever, and then it, you click on it, it jumps to the map and provides the wayfinding directions to where that uh, location is. So um, that is our, our intent is to, to include that um, to help guide those people. Um, if you want to go back one. Um, so we have the card view list of all of the uh, legislature elected officials, um, but we also have what we want to be able to showcase those that are tied to the districts and counties um, for each for each person. So this allows people to, especially if they don't know off the top of their head when they come to the Capitol, who is actually their elected official or representative, they can kind of find that and we can provide them on the right hand side a list of everybody um, that would be um, relative to their um, representation. So they can click on each of those profiles, jump to their that uh, person's profile, and they can kind of get the information, the contact information or room location as needed um, for their for their for their need. Um, let's go ahead and Excuse me, uh, <laughs> you have a map of the Senate districts and House districts, or and then you know, you punch on Laramie County and it comes out and, and they're all expanded. Or I'm, I'm just wondering, this just looks like county government. Officials. Yeah, so it would be definitely, it would definitely be showcasing different, we can kind of provide toggles of the different uh, districts. So if it's at the county level, or if we provide a, a toggle to another view to show any of the explicit districts, we can kind of provide both those views. Um, one thing we can look into is punching in um, an address. Our user could punch in an address, so that way they, we can kind of automatically filter down to who the, the representative would be based on their location. Thank you. And, and this will all, a lot of this is just, um, basically converting for the legislative branch, executive branch, we may need to do some more content development, but for legislative branch, most of this content just feeds from our website. So for example, the redistricting map that's already on the website, that's what will populate this page. You already have it, it just has to be yeah. piped in. Yeah. You might need a little spruce up. <laughs> So this gives you a bit of sense of the look and feel of how that um, is expressed. Would you, uh, Madam Chairman, um, on the, when you have the portrait composites, would you include the governor's portraits in that? Okay. Do we have any offices that have like I think the treasurer's office has a picture of every treasurer. We do as well. I think our, I'm looking at Kevin. <laughs> Kevin's not covered, it's fine. Sure. <laughs> I, yeah, I think, that mo I think that most elected officials had an official portrait of some <laughs> manner. I know I have all the auditor ones. I think secretary of state does, I think. Education, <laughs> treasurer's office. Education, treasurer. Sorry, Kevin, I dumped everything on you. Steve. There's some great portraits inside the superintendent of schools uh, of, um, office as well. How do you want to address those, those portraits that are in non-public areas? Well, I think the point would be to have them digitally live here. I don't, I don't think we... Okay. I'm not sure the intent is to... I don't think there's a need to have the public see those photos apart from digitally. Agree. Do we do we have those digital assets? Uh, is there photography of, of all those portraits? I, I don't know if they've been scanned or not. We have to check with the state archives, but um, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, so this would be uh, the the database, the legislature database. So this is obviously using the, the data kind of from that um, website database um, in a very similar fashion. So user will have the ability to go in, uh, type in any of these fields. So if they're looking by last name of Smith or first name of Nigel, um, we'll return um, a list of anyone relative to what they've searched for. 
um, throughout all years, unless they uh, selected a specific start year or end year. So if you should tab over, you'll kind of see here, um, it will kind of provide that full list of anyone that, um, you just know, a might... second question yeah, I guess, I guess just a comment. I think it, if they, once all of them are digitally representative, I think it'd be interesting to have a, uh, uh, by election cycle, uh, a, a digital composite of all the elected officials. And that would be, I think, I think that would be, uh, pretty neat to go back in by, by year and say, well, who were the officers and, you know, the, the start of World War II or whenever, you know, or just go back in and just, just look at those different things. I think that would be interesting. And it's interesting for us to go down and, and see the different treasures that we've had, but I have no idea, you know, necessarily, except when Ty Thompson was there when, when the Secretary of State was, was, was there, so. There's a lot of potential that would be really interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of potential once you get it in digital and you can, you can, you can uh, develop some interesting uh, product. Absolutely. Yeah, we would love that. Uh, we love that feedback. Um, you know, with the database, it's really just about formatting and organizing the data, how your team would would feel useful. So if there are other ways we want to organize it in, in not just in kind of what you kind of really see, um, absolutely, you know, just give us some insight and we can kind of take a look at it to see all their options and other views we can provide users the ability to kind of group different uh, officials together. Um, so yeah, uh, so this is again just a kind of a list. So if you were to uh, search for all uh, element, uh, this would provide um, the full list of anyone with that name, as well as um, providing information of um, their time in the House or the Senate, their district, uh, county, as well as a, a location of their composite. So you want to tab the next. So if you click on um, so that will kind of give you an indicator of like where the composite is located. We also will have kind of a searchable uh, function map to kind of show where all the composites are, are located. I think on the right hand side, and again, your notes of kind of enhancing the, the key, we'll have to make that a little bigger. Um, we will have uh, the ability to kind of showcase on the map and where those groupings are, um, as well as um, if you click on a specific, um, representative, it might say, um, we can kind of on the map identify like roughly what, where in the hallway or on the wall that that composite is located. Obviously we can't necessarily pinpoint an exact um, spot on the wall, but we can kind of give them a rough visual in the map to kind of indicate they're in this hall. We can provide them wayfinding to get to that area. Obviously I think the composites are in uh, chronological order. so. It should be pretty easy for people to kind of sort through and kind of figure out where 1950 or 45 is um, throughout the database. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so that's those are all all the the four primary um, uh, content areas on on the new informational kiosk. Was there any any questions before we move on to these new sign types? Good. Sweet. All right. Yeah, I think it's going to be it's going to make for a much richer experience at those kiosks throughout um, the building. Uh, so, based on our walkthrough, our, our tour, um, uh, whenever that was <laughs> last month, um, there was a number of sign types and and uh, and the feedback we got. Thanks very much for everybody that took the time to to walk through file stage and add some comments and and thoughts and suggestions. Um, we are able to take those and consolidate all that information, and 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 uh, we're in the process of making updates to the 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 wayfinding sh uh, schedule, the message schedule for the wayfinding, and then uh, adjusting uh, signs and, and locations and, and sign types. Uh, but in that process, that we also came up with the need for a number of different uh, additional sign types or some edits to to current sign types, um, and. Um, Ian's been working working on that over the last uh, over the last week or so, um, um, together with the, the rest of the team, and we've got some changes to walk through uh, with you. 
Um, one thing there was a there was a question about the the arrows that we use to indicate directions, um, and we we developed this adjusted. Uh, we we took that same simple shape, but added some sort of graphic hints that make it a little more well, really clear what the point of the arrow is. Um, by removing the, the, the sharp edges uh, on these corners and increasing the depth of this indent to make that really clear that the arrow is pointing to the right in this instance. Um, and then for the you, you are here, uh, there was a request that the, the icon uh, connected better with the, uh, with the floor locator that's used on the directories. So we took that precise same shape that we use on the directories and, and created, used that as sort of the the pinpoint of this of this um, oval shape uh, that we use to to identify uh, the person's location um, on the on the actual maps. Um, Ian, if you can start walking us through some of these adjusted sign types and and the reasons why we why we went this direction. Yeah, absolutely. Good morning, everyone. Um, so these are so in the discussion with. Uh, during the site walk, um, when we uh, were, okay, so it's the capital first level um, outside of the stairs down to the garden level, we have uh, directories um, at the top of both stairwells, and we had proposed a uh, wooden base freestanding uh, directory, and there was want to have a more open base. So as you're coming up the stairs, you can see the surrounding environment and you're not looking at a wooden structure. Um, so we looked at um, a uh, open base. So using the Julius Bloom legs that are used for all of the railing in throughout the Capitol, both inside and outside. Um, and then we also looked at scaling down the sign types as small as they could go. So they were visually um, less impeding the, sp uh, the space as well. So the, the two on the right um, that Nigel's cursors are on, um, those are the smaller ones. Um, and there's a little bit of weird, uh, okay, zooming in the rendering of the folks in the water. But um, so we looked at smaller signs for the capital first level, um, which is what led to these two options on the right. We then also to look at a more consistent wayfinding and signage package. Um, we also looked at what do the freestanding signs on the garden level look like if they have the same uh, Julius Boom legs, as well as on the first level south directory. So that led us to these. Nigel, I don't know if you want to go to the next page or. Yeah, um, so we also, for comparison's sake, we also um, have what the uh, garden level and first level uh, south uh, directory looks like with that wooden base um, as a as a comparison. Um, so yeah, we were, we were looking at how to have a a cohesive system, but there was concern about losing the wooden base elsewhere. So we wanted to bring this up for discussion. So um, any, um, sorry, go ahead. Was that it, Ian, or did you have something? Yep. Okay, that was awesome. it. I'll start. I feel like on the first level, um, I think the concern, and please anyone jump in who was on that walk, wasn't so much about the wood. It was that there was very, that it was a really large piece of furniture for um, a very, very small amount of information. So that's where the stanchion sign had come up. So like the, the fourth the very furthest right one on the prior um, slide. I I don't I don't have much appetite for putting the larger directions or the larger directories on the Julius Bloom legs. Yeah, I'm sure. 
Go ahead. Yeah, well, and I'm just looking at the, the two on the right, that if you took the artwork off the bottom of the third one and got rid of the farthest right one, you I think you'd have one uniform sign. I'm not sure you want uniformity why you've got the artwork on the bottom of those, those uh, two informational pieces. So if you, if you just took the artwork out and made it uh, one, one size, not just... That would be actually a smaller sign than the one you got on the full, uh, the uh, the other side. So, Madam Chairman, go ahead. Yeah. Um. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I just wanted to to go back quickly. Appreciated the treasurer's comments as well, but I want to come back to to what you indicated, and I I had the same reaction. Um, that was one of the only pieces that I saw in file stage that that I I just uh, I did didn't comment there, knowing that we'd be meeting. I think the idea there was just in in those two areas on the east and west, we just needed a smaller sign. And to me, that was really the only spot that that I would be interested in in the spindle legs versus the you know, the formal base uh, that we've kind of indicated all along. So uh, to me, I, I don't I don't really uh, favor having any more of these than just the couple that we indicated. Great. I, th I think this, it sounds like in general, the feedback is um, keep the the spindle legs for the two outside the garden level on outside the garden level stairs on the first level confusing but keep it the wood base everywhere else for these freestanding directories everybody's nodding over here in the room okay awesome like thank you that's great um, I, just, I, I know there's a lot to figure out yet in terms of of engineering and how these actually work, um, but they do seem rather top heavy. And I'm not seeing any reference to the, the built-in dolly function that we'd like so that we don't damage the building or the people moving them for maintenance. So is that still to come? And are you concerned about the, um, the top heaviness of the ones with the spindles? Or will the base possibly be made of lead? Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we currently the the thinking of the base for the spindle signs are a steel base. Um, we have not forgotten about the uh, dolly wheels to uh, have them be movable. Um, that will come uh, moving forward. Um, we have sort of. For the wooden ones, we've had it in the back of our head that the, the base may need to be weighted. Um, and same thing with these new uh, spindle-legged types is to ensure that they um, are not top-heavy. Correct. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Madam Chairman. I was I was actually thinking to, to counteract that you would have kind of a a cam over locking system that on the back you have a lever that would cam over and lock it to the floor so it couldn't tip over and then when you cam it over the other way your dolly wheels would would emerge and and raise it up so you can move it for cleaning but yeah just just waiting if you get I, I think I think you really have to have a double cam system, one to lock it to the floor and, and one to raise the dolly wheels. And it's not that big of a mechanical, you know, uh, I think step to, to do that to ensure that you have positive control uh, both ways. But you'd have to have basically a a, a dowel and a and a hooking system that would be in the floor. So once you set it in one place, you uh, that's that's where it's going to be unless you 
you put those type of uh, mechanisms in multiple places and that would be inappropriate. Okay, so some of that may need to be sorted out a little bit. I would note the current ones up there are certainly not top heavy in there. They are shockingly bottom heavy. <laughs> so I'm sure we can work out something. Uh, we have a we have a sample of the Julie's Bloom uh, post uh, here. It's, it's by my desk actually, and it's it's amazingly heavy. Every time someone goes to look at it, and they go to pick it up, and then and they don't because it's it's so heavy. Just one of those posts, but. Uh, yeah, um, and and Treasure Mayer, we'll we'll be we'll be addressing uh, in, in the DD process how and 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 especially in engineering how to make these things mobile, um, uh, while also making sure that that mobility doesn't make them ugly. <laughs> um, we don't want huge wheels on, underneath this thing. It, it wants to look elegant and seamless for the environment. Uh, stay in place when it needs to stay in place, and be mobile when you need to be able to. Uh, move it or or to clean or for whatever other reason. So th that'll be part of that process. But as an overall um, um, aesthetic and approach, uh, this conversation has helped us. I mean, initially when we came up with the spindle approach with these smaller signs at the top of those two stairwells, um, we wondered whether or not if we were doing that, then we should apply that to all all these types of signs. And this conversation has helped us to to find that yes, we're going to use this approach for the spindles. Let's talk about whether or not these need to be the precisely the same size, um, um, which is possible. Um, there was there was some request to, to, to minimize the size wherever possible. Um, but uh, um, that's something we can we can discuss and refine. The artwork, am I just on the wrong page or a different page than you guys? And, and I'm just not in love with the artwork on the bottom of these signs. Yeah, that that has been part of the, the 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 process as we move from conceptual through the SD that we would have this this hint at the Trump Loy as an aesthetic at the bottom of of signs where there wasn't uh, an exorbitant amount of content. So signs like this with this density of content, we wouldn't include the Trump Loy, but you'll see see these visual references on a number of the other directory signs at the base just yes. to connect it to the building. On the top of the trap lawyer on the on the third one over, it would be, you know, the right size sign for both. But if you guys like the Trump lawyer, I'll be no, the odd man out on this that. one. I appreciate that feedback. And yeah, for, fortunately or unfortunately, I think we told BI to run with that about three months ago. So I do I do have one question, Nigel. Yeah. At what point, in particular on those smaller stanchions, um what at what point do you tip to the two legs versus the one? And I'm going to show my ignorance here, but the ones with two legs look like the creatures out of Star Wars. <laughs> yes, or I'm sorry if I can't unsee it. So now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and thankfully you won't just see these things ever in silhouette. You'll you'll always see them uh, looking down at the at the base and and at different perspectives and angles. So this this profile, while true in an elevation like this, is not how your eye will take them in as you're moving through space. Oh, I shouldn't have used that word. Um, <laughs> but... Paul, help me out. Someone, anyone? Are the, 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 those guys? Yeah. yeah, well, the ones that look like that. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> so on, on that thought, I was just thinking, I would like to see a visual, and maybe maybe it wouldn't look good, but I'd love to see a visual of the legs out to the edge. Um, if that's possible, it, it seems like that would still be plenty supportive, but instead of coming in like they are, if they, if it was a straight line down, um, for the legs and, and again, maybe that wouldn't look good once we actually looked at it, but I'd be interested to see. If it uh, uh, um, um, Ian, I'm, uh, I'm sure we've, we can look at alternate placements for the legs. I, I'm, I'm, I'm certain uh, a sign of the scale would need two legs. Um, and their their placement. Uh, I'm I'm not sure if it would work if they were to the far end of these, especially the way these things are designed. 
aesthetically um, because they're they're circular and the sign is square. Um, they have a circle profile and these sort of undulating details up at the top. I'm I'm not certain, but we could look at maybe pushing them out towards the edge a little more. And um, I don't think it would work at right at the edge, but we can we can explore that. Yeah, I'm, I mean, y'all are bringing up what I did study, which was like moving the legs in and out. Where does it make sense? If it's all the way at the edge, it looks like a bow-legged cowboy. If it's too far in, it looks like <laughs> a strange flamingo. <laughs> now, sometimes it would be nice to see just the rough, you know, design mm -hmm. studies that you did in developing what your final presentation is to us. Mm -hmm. You're just a rough. This is where we went to get here. Okay. Yeah. And thank you. You answered my, my question really, Nigel, was did we need two legs or was it just for aesthetics? And your answer is yes, on that size of sign, we need two legs. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that, yeah, um, mo mostly so the thing don't fall over so easy, but yeah. Perfect. That's, that was really my question. Yeah, awesome. So, so Nigel, uh, this is Bill again. I, uh, you had referenced or ask about um, sizes. And to begin to answer the question as we go into that conversation, just generally speaking, uh, having done a little bit of this through my professional life, I've always been driven nuts by inconsistency. And, and so generally speaking, I really favor consistency in style and size, uh, regardless of whether uh, we have tons and tons of information on a sign or not quite so much. And maybe I'm the only one, but it just, I, I get driven nuts. For example, in Wyoming, we have, we have uh, traffic signs that are different almost every other mile. If you reference a, a community coming up, some are caps and down and some are all caps and that just drives me nuts. So that's a beginning of an answer to the question you posed a few minutes ago, which is, do we modify the sizes of these things? The bases, I would assume, would be cheaper if we made them all the same size, would they not? Um, yeah, oh, like, like in these two, for example, why doesn't this one just go down to here to accommodate what is necessary for this one? Is that yeah, what you're correct? And, and yeah. You know, that may not be what you were uh, referring to, Nigel, but um, just in general, it just feels like to me it would be uh, maybe even a little cheaper, but certainly in the name of consistency, uh, better from my standpoint, but I, I'll be interested to hear what everybody else has to say. Mr. Co-Chair, I tend to agree that if we, you know, if, if we have a, I, I understand the intent is to, to limit blank space, but if we have so much blank space that it's going to be problematic, then we probably need to consider a different sign type. Um, whereas I, I think, I prefer the consistency on the, the base heights otherwise. Go ahead. Um, Madam Chairman, I think that if, for example, on the two signs on the right, if you did have that consistent base size, it would give room, pardon me, Mr. Treasurer, but it would give room to kind of carry through that trump loy when there's extra white space too, so that there's not just, it's not so text heavy on, on the signs. It may be an opportunity to kind of carry that theme through a little bit more, which was what the in design intent was before um, the sign information started populating each one. That, that's You're true. You're forgiven. <laughs> that's true. And if there's not, and if there's one sign that the like the very robust first level one that maybe there's not room for it, then fine. Yeah. I like that suggestion. I think I think it just kind of gets to one other solution would be to do the same on the two signs on the right to do the same size base and then the overall top would drop down which would help with visibility but that's another different kind of inconsistency so which kind of inconsistency do we 
uh, hate the least? Well, I, I would just say for uh, the, if you have Trump lawyer on one and not on one, uh, Mr. Chairman, you're consistently inconsistently, so you're random. So in the randomness of the project, we are consistent. Spoken <laughs> <laughs> as a former state senator, by golly, I, I think I followed you. You can also say that it's custom, okay. right? Everything in the Capitol is custom. It was handmade. It was so. I, I, I think. As, as a rule, it's better to have more consistent uh, sign uh, sizes and and um, and heights uh, because of how we view signs and where they should be in our eye line. But if a sign gets to the point where there's so little information on it that it just it feels like there's more sign than info, then we need to look: is there another standard size that we could do? And that's precisely what led us to these. These signs were ultimately were meant to be like these two here, but when we re when we were on site and we whittled down the information that needed to be on it, it, it was only taking up these first few three lines, and we'd have all this black, um, whether it was this size or that size, uh, that just felt like it, it was an abyss. Uh, so that's where we started to say, okay, so we need another sign type, and that's where we landed on these. Um, so now we have two sign types instead of uh, of just one, but at least we're 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 consistent with that. Um, the problem then lies is should these two uh, accommodate that copy exactly, or do these should these two at least be the same size? I know this one has less content than this one, but should it just be the same size so that these two at least were precisely the same? Um, and then the same again with these wood ones down here. Sorry. Uh, should these both be the same size, even though the content in here is is you know five or six lines more than on there, so that these are both exactly the same. Um, Nigel, I, I think commentary from the room is that for the big signs with wooden bases, we prefer the bases all to be the same size and the height to all be the same yeah. size. Yeah. On the stanchion signs, do we do we care if there's two sizes or not? I mean, again, just for being streamlined and for production ease, I I would maybe lean towards one size. But does yes. anybody else have strong feelings? I lean that way. I, I think that makes sense. I know when we were looking at the slide deck, I mean, some of the concern obviously was that empty space. So, I mean, you'd almost have to go with a little bit larger in between or smaller size, right? But maybe to see some some minimal, what, whatever our minimal text would be on that size to see if it still looks okay. Nigel and Ian, on the smaller stanchion signs, are we only talking about just the two? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, these are the only two that will exist in the oh. whole building and they're not adjacent to each other. So you wouldn't be, you know, I mean, no one's going to pull out their tape measure and run back and forth to see if they're the same. Um, I, I'm I'm not alarmed by these being different from each other because okay. they're not I, in that, the that, That's really helpful. I guess I would say I don't really care because they're on opposite ends of the building. There's only two. And we we understand why we went with that. And it's not like there's a huge savings and, you know, it's not like we're producing that many of them. Yeah. Okay, so is that fairly- yeah, sure, and I agree for what it's worth and uh, appreciate Nigel and Ian, you bringing us up to speed on uh, what led to the development there and um, I'm good with that. Thank you. Okay, um, it's 11, wow. Um, we need to keep moving. Um, I, I, I understand that um, we should be finished with this pretty quickly with the with the di stuff do we have more more time or what's our where are we at uh rihanna wendy do you have a let's see here i'm wondering how the we have we have an hour set aside for the policy review i'm confident we could take an hour if we really wanted to but maybe we can do that in slightly less um I think I think we better finish up way I think we better finish up wayfinding 
Okay. Nigel, that's very important. Let me move through this quickly. Everyone, I, I really want to hear what you have to say, but bear in mind that um, these these images and this deck will all be available on the file stage and already is. So, so please express uh, um, what you can there as well. Um, we had to do these. Uh, these are for the small extensions. Um, uh, we had a uh, video tour sign that um, we wanted to look at smaller versions of, and there's variations on on the theme here that you can look at in the in the deck as you review. Um, some of them are two sided, some are single sided, and some offer a way to slip in uh, specific information for a particular event and then take it out so it's just blank. Um, so instead of the clips, it would slide into the frame. Um, and then we would create a like a, a word based template that people would be able to use to print out the um, artwork for those those slip ins. And um, just to clarify the the attachment method for the printouts for that is still um, being studied at the moment. But yes, that is a spot to put. That's why those two sign types are taller is to make room for eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper. And then, uh, Ian, you want to talk through where these come from, where, where they're in play? Yes. So um, this is sort of the, the same um, larger discussion that we were just having, which is looking at sign types and content on those signs. And um, do we scale the sign to match the content or do we leave the sign a consistent size? Um, so we looked at the standing signs, which are all on the Capitol grounds, um, and looking at the verbiage that we landed on uh, from the site walk and then the follow-up file stage feedback that led us to looking at three different sizes of signs. So the, the Julius Bloom leg all stays the same. Um, and then the sign, so in this instance, the sign height does lower as the sign gets shorter. I'm trying to ensure that these signs are as minimal as possible and don't obstruct the views of the Capitol grounds. So we landed on um, three different sizes for this, a tall, medium, and short that uh, makes room for four lines of content, three lines, or two and one lines of content. Um, you want to uh, take this, Nigel? <laughs> sure. Uh, so, because of the desire to use the Julius Bloom um, post, um, we wanted to make everyone aware that, that now we're talking about two different types of material: the the tool bronze for the sign itself, and the polished brass for the Julius Bloom uh, uh, post. Um, also, there's the distinction in scale. Uh, the depth of the tool bronze is going to be about half an inch, whereas the depth of the of the post, depending on where the post ends, is going to be about uh, around an inch uh, in depth. So that creates this sort of staggered uh, relationship between the sign and the post. Um, so we will need to study how to how to create that transition from. Uh, the size and the material difference, and want to make you all aware of that change. Uh, and it's not that that implication of of going with these materials, um, and how that that will need to be addressed so that it looks uh, uh, finished and appropriate. Um, any concerns or questions about that? Since we're we're moving towards a Julius Bloom for all these bronze. I was just going to note, Nigel, that if um, when everyone steps out the door here, there's a couple of our existing um, stanchions outside the auditorium for agenda information, and it had the same exact challenge. And this is a much more elegant solution than what you'll see out there. <laughs> okay. So take a look at those, look at this, and let us know in file stage what your thoughts are. Um, this is just minimizing a sign um, that's on the on the. Um, wall uh, adjacent to the stairs that go up uh, up from the garden level. Um, this is the original size, and there was a desire to decrease the the size of those signs so they wouldn't be so uh, so so large. <laughs> um, also, adjusting the uh, uh, from the the classic uh, one to the to the modern one um, on the on the numeral as well.
um, there was a sign needed down by uh, um, the, the, the car to the least of the elevator and restrooms and at the east end of the garden level that is actually narrower than all of the other uh, other corridors um, uh, just by, by a few uh, half an inch or so but it's enough uh, it's it's sufficient width for ADA standards but because a lot of uh, people own wheelchairs that are actually wider than the standard um, even though that the, they should be able to go down there they can't go down the corridor so we wanted to let people know that if they're at that particular location the entrance to the restrooms and elevators at the west end of the garden at the east end of the garden level that the, there was wider ADA access at the at the opposite end of that uh, of the building so the uh, we talked about various different types of verbiage to communicate that and this is what uh, di is recommending does that does that uh, work for everyone well, just location is it just the garden level that has that issue or is it yeah it's just the garden level yeah. and and only garden level east it's the yeah. one so not not first level east because that seems kind of narrow to yeah, me too, yeah. but it's not. I'm, so there was a great piece big piece of structure in the way. <laughs> so it makes more sense to me that we delete this and just don't. We're better off just saying there's no ADA access, and and leave it blank for in the in the basement, because if you're going to put this everywhere. It doesn't no, make this sense. Just go in, this would just go in that one location. This well, is one for one spot. Representative Nicholas, if you recall, including the, the East Garden level in ADA access saves us a lot of verbiage and arrows yeah. in the middle of the building. So that, that's that's where we ended up here is that we can we don't have to specify, we don't it, it saves us a whole bunch of lines on the other signs when you're coming from the extension because we can just say you can go either you can go to everywhere everywhere versus having to say ADA this way non-ADA that way so that's that's how we got here so this is just one sign on the wall right it is not a flag sign Ian I'm racing through these things please speak up if I'm missing something I'm sorry just want to make sure we hear things um the uh the ADA for uh, this go on go on Ian <laughs> yeah uh, for this one um there are two different types of hearing assistance um throughout your building there are some locations where um there's an FM receiver available and there are other locations where there's an FM receiver and T coil available um so in doing some research in looking at hearing assistance signage and iconography, um, the ear with a slash through it um, is the standard for hearing impairment and hearing assistance. Um, when there's a T coil, there is a small little T added to that icon as well. So we took the the uh, the icon that we we took the icon and the information um, that we needed, and we applied it to the the same sort of gold uh, vinyl style. So the locations of these signs would be on the doors, into the various uh, public meeting rooms, conference rooms, um, the House and Senate uh, gallery, and probably missing other locations, um, but depending upon what's available would be that type of sign um, that says either FM receiver or FM and T coil. And I know that in other locations, um, we're trying to minimize verbiage that goes along that goes along with icons. But I think in this instance, um, since there are two different types um, of, of hearing assistance, I think it would maybe make sense to keep the verbiage along with these icons as well. So this is a new addition um, since the walkthrough that we realized that we needed to um, add into scope. So my preference is to remove the verbiage, just have the a small effect in the corner of the window. 
I mean, we, I don't, the idea that we're going to have this on every single door um, and at every conference room makes no sense to me. That's my two cents. Do we meet ADA standards by just having the, the iPhones? Um, we can, I, I can double check. I, I don't think we need to have the verbiage, um, but I can't speak to that 100%. I would need to go back and confirm. Yeah, go ahead. Would, would we only need to just say at the main entry of this building uh, meets all requirements of uh, ADA standards? I don't think you want to say that. Pardon? I don't think you want to say that. We don't? No. We don't do, we don't meet all the standards. We, we do where we can, but there are uh, a couple of locations where we might have a sloped floor that we could do nothing about that doesn't quite meet. Standards. And by okay. declaring that yeah. there are none of those, okay, you might well, find someone. That's, that's good to know. I'll never tell anybody <laughs> we need all the standards. <laughs> all right, okay. so, Madam Chairman, go ahead. Uh, um, you know, to pick up on where the treasurer was going with that, though, I, I wonder, because I feel the way Representative Nicholas uh, does, that seems like quite a bit to be putting on way too many doors. I, I just wonder if there isn't an opportunity at the kiosk or something to indicate that FM receiver available in our meeting rooms if we can't do it in one location as the treasurer pointed to. Is, does that make sense, Ian? I mean, is that, would that meet some requirements and still be okay or what What do you think? Yeah, um, what I do remember reading was that for instances like movie theaters, you can put that information like at the, the ticket box. And so it says it once, as a sort of blanket statement for everything, there seem to be more. Uh, there, when it came, when it comes to individual rooms and where you have and where you don't, it sounded like that we needed to have some sort of information at each of those locations to clarify what is available there. Um, to to this concern, yes, we can certainly look at confirming that we can remove the verbiage and we could scale that um, icon down as, as much as possible. But I mean, this won't be on every single door um, throughout the entire campus. This would only be in public spaces where it's, and there's, I can potentially pull it up, but there's some like verbiage that's specifically about public spaces and it lists out um, governmental um, meeting rooms and things. Um, so um, we'll just need to confirm um, the location of where we do need to have it. And then if the location is maybe in more spots than we would necessarily like, we can reassess um, the size of the icon, if it has verbiage or not, and maybe we could come back and have a, another discussion. And I think Wendy knows the answer. Yeah, and the the only locations that we originally had the signs that weren't a, a more permanent type of sign are 10 public meeting rooms and the uh, House and Senate galleries. Those are, are the public spaces that we needed to provide that accommodation. I don't, possibly the governor's ceremonial conference room. We might have to check that, but there's um, the rooms that it's provided in are not every room in the building where the public can go it's where um public debate or types those types of meetings are occurring I'm not sure exactly what that language is in the ada but it's it's basically the rooms where the public can come and hear um, meeting activity so i think the consensus is we definitely want to remove the verbiage if we can and TBD on location, but it sounds like maybe we need to have it on each door where it's available since we have a lot of doors where it's not available. Okay. All right. Um, this is the there's directories in the vestibules at the north and south entrance to the Capitol building that already exist, and you can see it in the photograph here. 
and we're starting to explore how can we use that space so it's more consistent with other directory and wayfinding signage um, that will be installed across the campus. Um, our suggestion is to replace that inset area where all the those little hand let, hand type uh, inserts are with just one one large graphic that would cover over that um, and then emulate uh, some of the typographical approaches that we use um, in the rest of the building. Um, we need uh, uh, you folks to review this and let us know whether or not we are capturing the things that you want on this sign. The, the content here was much more extensive than on any of the other directories. Um, specifying room numbers and and other things so um let us know if, if this captures what you want and we'll uh we'll make those adjustments um oh i'm sorry i, I was just going to tell uh the chairman that i will have to ask and get back to you about that reference to the governor's office on the garden level so okay reception area is on the main level and we do have certain People that know where they're going and they do come in the back way, but I'll just I'll let you know. Beautiful. Thanks very much. Um, there's there's also a lot of instances where there's there's multiple different signs by elevators uh, around fire safety and maps. Um, we were able to find out that the maps aren't required um, because of the particular uh, cases. Uh, but the fire safety is, but that we can incorporate it into into signs that already will be in those locations that we're adding through wayfinding and remove the redundancy. So this is us showing you how we can add that messaging to the bottom of signs that will live there, both in the Capitol building um, and uh, extension and Herschler by just adding it to the bottom. It requires a uh, Braille as well, which we can accomplish in the tool bronze. Um, the, uh, the, the vinyl that we're using throughout the building is, 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 uh, emulates what's already there. Um, but in the Herschler building, because of the, of the kind of blonde kind of wood, uh, lighter wood that's, that's on the doors, that gold is not going to stand out sufficiently. So it's been recommended that we use, um, the, the dark, uh, detail um, trim color that's used throughout the building um, as the color for the vinyl that would go on the doors. All right. um, Herschler flags, Ian, do you wanna walk us through uh, the variations that we've come up with here? Yes, so, so looking at, um, there were some flag signs that had sh short words with a long flag. So again, looking at, um, do we want to have sort of uh, two different lengths of flag signs for Herschler? Um, there seemed to be a sort of clear delineation in this instance where all of the all of the main destinations or the departments or the agencies throughout Herschler um, need need a longer uh, flag sign. So, we would have sort of the main destinations and some of the sort of, yeah, main destinations are those longer signs. And then for restrooms, stairs, um, those that are sort of secondary destinations, if you will, um, those could be a shorter flag sign. So while we have two different flag sizes, um, there is a consistency in um, where they're used and uh, the type of destination that you're going to. I think that makes sense. Any other comments? No. Okay, there were some outstanding wayfinding questions that we needed to help resolving. Um, first of all, um, there's a number of, of private or limited entry uh, door signs that need to be applied throughout the complex, both in Herschler and in, uh, in the Capitol building proper. Um, initially, uh, the recommendation had been to use the word private, but there was some concern about the implications of that word since it's a public building. So uh, wondered whether or not um, option one or option two is favored. 
authorized access only or authorized personnel only? I lean towards option one. Any other strong feelings? I concur. All right. There you go. Option one. All right. Uh, when we're referring to the occupants in the, the Herschel building, are we talking about agencies or departments? We discussed this a little bit. I, you know, everywhere in our statutes and our budgets and everything, we we refer to agencies. So I sort of lean towards that. I kind of lean toward offices when we're talking about the elected officials. Otherwise, they are agencies. And again, we are talking about elected officials, but we're also talking about Gosh, eight or ten other agencies. Right. And there are agencies that use office, office of state lands. And and to clarify, this is only on some signage that um, refers to agencies to together generically for each sign. If it's the Department of Health, Behavioral Health Division, it will say Department of Health. It's when on a sign it says agencies not located in the Herschler West building can be found in Herschler East or departments located in. So that's the question. Yeah, I think for further clarification, this is really on those elevator directories on in the exterior, you know, of the elevator and then the interior to help kind of navigate globally. It's not specifically outside of an agency's door. Um, so kind of globally on elevator directories is what you're thinking or on the exterior of the building. That, that's a very helpful clarification. I should have mentioned that to start out with, yeah. I guess if you're looking at elevators, it's, you always think of it as the Department of Revenue. You don't think it of it as the Agency of Revenue. So it's it's at the top of a sign. So if you see Ian or Nigel, are you able to kind of pull up anything yeah. to show you what Nigel, could you go up? Could you go up to the, the fire signs? There's a Herschler directory there. Oh, yes. So zoom into that top portion, yeah. Sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting there. <laughs> so it's this word right here, departments. Should that be departments or agencies? I feel like it should be agencies. I agree. Ian, thank you for that. <laughs> All right. Okay, agencies. Um, some other questions, uh, should it be statewide official, elected officials or statewide elected officials offices as we list it here? I think I'm leaning towards offices with the thought being that the capital, we are, we, the officials are generally not there. So in the same way that we list like governor's office on the first level, it would be maybe more consistent and accurate to say offices. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, do we add attorney general's office to this listing on the first level? I think the answer to that is yes. We do want to wait fine to the AG's office. Okay. Um, there's a... Uh, uh, We'll put this map on here because we thought the uh, the location might be difficult to, to to remember. But there's this transom above the door that goes into the lobby, that's outside the reception area for the governor. Um, and there had been initially some suggestion uh, above this uh, on this that it would read something like governor's office. So there's some concerns uh, because of that. Um, the context being that. This is also how you get to the restrooms and elevators on, on the east wing of the first level. So the recommendation from the core team was that maybe we, that we shouldn't have signage on that location and leave it as it is. Um, if we did, then it should be something like Governor's Portrait Gallery. So it still suggests that the public is, is accessible to, to walk through here so they can get to the restroom and uh, elevator. Um, in addition, uh, um, another note in this area is that we would want to update the governor's uh, sign on the on the wall here to match the wayfinding and labeling for all the other um, offices that we're doing throughout the first floor. 
So Nigel, I'm going to let Betsy speak to this, but I think maybe the inclination was to leave it unsigned, but I'll let, I'll let you talk about that. Yeah, so I'll say um, um, tourists in Wyomingites are not shy. Uh, even though there's a <laughs> church sitting there, they love to go in and they come in and even come into the reception area. But I do think it doesn't make sense to put governor's office on that first door. So I'm fine with it blank or governor's portrait gallery. I think we're fine with either way. Um, okay. other way to go. But then when it comes, yes, to the actual, the, the as, as we call it, the 1917 door to the actual office. Yeah, right now, I think it just says Mark Gordon. And I don't know if you put governor or governor's office over that. I guess it would just mimic however you're doing the other elected officials' offices. I do think that the wood sign to the side, that was just us moving in saying nothing says governor and we found this on the floor in the Idleman building. <laughs> it's up here so people know. So yeah, I think the wood sign could come down. Okay, so you're you're suggesting that we could remove the wood sign, not replace it, but maybe add governor's office above uh, the governor's name. That's what I, is that what we're doing for the other officials? Isn't it just gold lettering on the doors? The, the other officials have gold lettering on the doors. Um, some of them have wall plaques um, uh, next to it, and some have flags. It's dependent on where that particular office is as to which one it accommodates best. And, and the ones are these, just so different; it's a little hard to. Yeah, I mean, we do, the doors are open, at least one of them, not both of them from eight to five. So we can't really put anything on the, the windows to the doors because they're not typically closed. So- um, You do have the transom though. And I, I like the idea of using that space up here and removing this. There are also gold letters similar to what is at the house and the Senate chambers yeah. um, storage and, and we'll look for those drawings and see if we can figure out why they didn't get installed during the project there has to be a reason maybe they didn't fit maybe but we have them so okay. i think, oh yeah. okay sweet i think what we heard is maybe no signage on the first pass through and consider adding gold vinyl on the second transom. Well, and, and to your co-chairman's consistency comment, I, I don't think there's any signage on the garden level that says governor's portrait gallery. No, there, some of the governor's portraits are on the garden level. That's true. So, yeah, I, you know, if you talk to the, the project, we had a little bit of interpretation about the governor's portrait gallery on the 1890 wall. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. And there will be on the interpretive exhibit panels um, on the, the ceremonial conference room lobby area, for lack of a better word, where the governor's portraits are. That content will, I think, Nigel, hopefully we still are holding this, reference that additional portraits are available on the floor below. So there'll be some interpretation about where you can find the whole collection. And additionally, that is the governor's portraits will be interpreted on those electronic kiosks yeah, that we saw yes, at the beginning yes. of yeah. the, the yeah. meeting. So that's a good And meeting. one of those kiosks lives here. So, right. okay. So, I think you like the core team's recommendation. Beautiful. Uh, okay, here's a, here's a, a question about the, uh, um, we created those uh, maps for exterior and for downstairs in uh, just down the hall from where you're sitting right now for the uh, extension. Um, so there was a desire expressed, to, do, we do we want similar maps in the lobbies, this, the center lobbies of both the Herschler East and Herschler West first floor? Um, and I think they would potentially go in each of the lobbies um, and potentially both the lower level as well as the first level, just to try to capture people where they enter in to these lobbies for the first time. If the visitor enters into a lobby and realizes they don't see their destination in the directory, we wanted to be able to give them not only the information of which 
um, uh, lobby they needed to go to in which building, but then also potentially how to get there. Um, I feel like I need to see a little bit of a markup, but I think it's a good idea. And and Madam Chairman, I don't know, Ian, if you have this, but the idea from this came from the extension map that showed East building occupants and West building occupants and kind of showed you those paths. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, I don't know if you have easy access to that map, but otherwise perhaps you could add it to file stage yeah. for mm -hmm. subcommittee's file stage review. Yeah, we'll do that. That'll be good. So I'm I'm curious about the extension elevators versus the Herschler. Herschler makes sense to me, um, but to have maps, and so obviously it wouldn't be the um, the the what would you, what would be the south elevator because don't. Uh, so, so, so we kind of need to know which location and which elevators. Yeah, we can, we can, we can add a, a document to file stage that shows you a representation of what we're doing for the uh, for the the map that is is being referenced here, and then also uh, a quick kind of location indicator of where where we we're considering putting those maps. Okay. Um, naming recommendations. I think this is the last bit um, that we were going to consider. Uh, do I have time to walk through this? I don't. I don't want to infringe on the other business that needs to be taken care of during this meeting. I think really quickly. Okay. And we know that we maybe can't if we sure, can't yeah. come to immediate consensus. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's see how quickly we can do this. I appreciate all everyone's patience. So the visitor center, we talked about some different options. You asked us to come back with some recommendations um, for the visitor center. Uh, we're recommending civics lab. Uh, we looked at some, uh, we are suggesting some alternates, uh, some other options, the civic discovery center and the civic learning lab. Um, some other alternates that came from our conversation in the room while we were there were the Civic Action Lab and the Civic Citizen Action Lab. Um, we like the succinct uh, nature of Civics Lab. Um, civics uh, talks about the category, what we're talking about, what's happening in this space. Lab describes the experience, this hands-on exploration um, that helps you to learn something without it sounding like learning or just education. We don't want it to feel like someone's going to school or um, we want someone to feel like they can go in there and get their hands on something and, and take something away that's of value. I, I tend to like it. I like that it's short and doesn't exclude adults or kids. It's accurate, but not too boring. <laughs> Uh, we, we actually we we had some some clever ideas, um, but we were hearing from uh, from other people that they didn't know what that meant. Or kids would say, well, "Why don't you say what it is?" Um, <laughs> they just they don't get it. So being too clever, while it made for sort of a cool little slogan, it it didn't communicate what the room was. So that's where Civics Lab seemed like the right answer. I guess I look at it, you look at your audience of a nine-year-old, what does a nine-year-old think of, of it when they hear the word lab? Science. Cool. Science, yeah. Mm -hmm. or Science computers. and hands-on, and computers. maybe we can touch stuff and make stuff. That's what yeah. I think. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, or, or, you know, I, I like the word discovery, but I don't know about, what about civics explored? Because if they haven't been there before, that's what they're actually doing. And they're exploring civics. And, uh, and kids like to explore. I would just, like they're just going back to school. I would just like to say on whichever one we choose, thinking about this from the perspective of tourists, 
coming in, looking this up again, you're in Nebraska and you're pulling up the Capitol and getting ready to come visit. I don't know that civics lab means anything to me if I was traveling to another state to go see the Capitol versus Discovery Center sound, it's the marketing piece. Like, ooh, ooh, that sounds neat. Ooh, that sounds exciting. Let's make sure we stop and do that. I don't know that just Civics Lab has that same effect of making me want to make go out of my way to, to go check it out. Go ahead. Along with Paula's comments, I, I'm not a science person. Lab is not anything I'd want to go to. I took the minimal <laughs> ever had to take <laughs> and it just sounds a little I me not being a science person civics lab sounds very sterile whereas discovery center sounds mm -hmm. fun I'm going to discover something it sounds like something fun to do um but I have to agree with that I avoided college classes <laughs> my science credit was baby physics with all the football players <laughs> <laughs> no math. No, I think maybe there's a slight lean towards civics discovery center but i i don't want us to spin our wheels on this one because i think it's okay. one of the more yeah. important yeah. ones but i think the warning is if you don't if you don't put any files if you don't put any comments in file stage, they will not be heard. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. Vote now. I feel like some of the other upcoming decisions will are maybe easier. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, because of the change from visitor center to something else, we were wondering whether or not we needed to, to look at the room you're in right now. Should that still be the student learning center? And we think it probably should. Or is this the student discovery hub or just the learning center? Um, if we talked about the student learning center, could should that refer to the larger area, which includes this, the whatever we, those three rooms are, the the civics lab or this whatever the name of that is, the this classroom you're in right now, um, and the coat room. Those are all three adjacent spaces that are are meant to serve the similar population of students. Should that should we refer to that area as a as a thing? I mean towards the recommended option and a couple of, of things that were discussed. Um, first off, we want to sort of hold this for students. So we don't want to necessarily um, have it available for, you know, legislative luncheons and whatnot. We have spaces for those. And so this, this is where we, we, we kind of want to hold for students. Um, and student learning center is a little boring, but there's there's also nothing here. We don't want people. No. This is for teachers and docents who already know they're bringing kids here. We don't want people coming to find this room because they think there might be something interesting in it. Yeah. And this is not really for public use um, much. I mean, I, I say that we're having a public meeting right now, but but <laughs> this is not. If somebody calls and needs to reserve a room for a public use, this is not going to be the first thing suggested. So I, I, you know, please object, but I'm sort of leaning towards the recommended option. Plus, we've already been calling it that for mm -hmm. yeah. five years, four, four years. So there's that. Okay. All right. Couple more, couple more spaces. The what we are already referring to as the Capitol Gallery, just outside, uh, outside there, where, uh, uh, um, where we're displaying artwork. Um, we actually have this noted in as a motion and approved as the Capitol Gallery. So I think that was really dirty. Yay! Okay, last one for today. Um, the auditorium just off the Capitol Gallery. Um, our recommendation is Capitol Square Auditorium. Um, but alternates would be Capitol Auditorium or Wyoming Auditorium. We looked at different names for auditorium. None of them made sense. It's not a hall. It's not a chamber. It's not a, a room. Um, it's definitely an auditorium. And um, it needs more of a name than just auditorium. I'm not sure what square adds. Yeah, I agree. Other thoughts? I guess, uh, Madam Chairman, I would, I would kind of favor just Capitol Auditorium. I, I'm not sure that we want to encompass, you know, the whole square block, but I, I don't feel really strongly 
either way about the top two. But I'm just wondering if we need square in there. I think that probably came from staff being entrenched in the project for so long. That's what we think of. Technically, it's in the Herschler. It's on the Herschler Foundation. It's not in the Capitol. So if you're going to the Capitol thinking you're going to find an auditorium, you're not going to find the auditorium. I just, when I tell people how to get there, I just tell them it's at the end of the connector. It's an auditorium at the end of the connector. So I think either makes sense. I, I think in general, we're leaning towards Capitol Auditorium. Okay, so cast your votes in the file stage and we'll we'll see where we land. Um, that That is everything that we wanted to cover with you folks uh, from the ICE perspective. Really do appreciate all your time and the feedback and we look forward to seeing, uh, seeing your notes and comments in file stage. Uh, as soon as we can, we'll upload uh, that additional content for the for the map question around the, the Herschler lobbies. And uh, so you can see the, the style of map we're talking about and the locations that we think uh, that might be appropriate. Um, and yet, any questions about anything that we walked over? Walk yes, I, I guess when we go to file stage, are we going to see maybe in a bridge thing that if we're only going, if we're only changing uh, things on 30 pages rather than, you know, several hundred pages that you got to go through and look? Again and again, and stuff. I don't know if, if, if um, the current thing, the current uh, document that's up is the one that we just walked through today. That includes the different, uh, um, the whole uh, um, um, app for the uh, informational kiosk. It includes uh, the um, changed in sign types, and then this last discussion about naming and uh, open questions. Those are those are already up in file stage. Yeah. But it doesn't include anything beyond that. So, All right, good. I think Nigel, what Treasurer Meyer is asking is if when you upload that additional um, information, if you could put maybe an approved notation of what was maybe approved in the meeting, or or maybe remove those slides. I mean, you've been when we okay, yeah. So so instead of just loading uh, loading up additional stuff, we we upload this document again, add the map thing that we talked about, but remove anything that's been approved. So that and you're that just looking at helpful to you, so we don't accidentally change our mind on anything. That <laughs> in that case, it's uh, Nigel, slides. if I could interject for just one moment, sorry. Um, this is Jillian, and I've been capturing the consensus and the notes throughout. So there will be notes from me, just confirming the direction that we want to go, and then there is a way to attach those additional visuals to that one comment. So there is an action for DI in there. So hopefully that will help and and not have to go through uh, many different files if we uh, upload over this one. I would note that this one is only 65 pages, not 413. Good. <laughs> <laughs> the due date, do you have a, a projected due date for us? We have put that in there as September 4th. Thank you, Jillian. So just so I understand, Jillian, um, we, you've already noted in the file stage what stuff has been approved so people can see that and just move on to the next page. Yes, sir. So that we don't need to worry about one more document. Okay, I got you. All right, brilliant. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Um, I, that's it from that's from me, except to say that uh, Senator Landon and I have the same disease uh, about signage out on the roads. <laughs> My wife gets annoyed at me when I get annoyed at signs. <laughs> So, so maybe you and I should take a road trip and leave my wife away. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll, I'll tell you something that you can't ever unsee, at least in Wyoming, is that, and this is because I worked on a sign shop project out at YDOT. Um, when you see a sign in YDOT, um, about 2004-ish, they changed from all caps to ca uh, every word capitalized because they determined it was more legible. And then also kind of for the old people in the room and not the super young ones, um, when you go to a movie in the old days before digital, you could see the little dot that cued the projector people to um, flip to the other reel. And once someone pointed that out to you, you could never not see it again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, like signs, every sign 
that's produced by YDOT has it uh, the last two letters of the year. So if it was in 11 or 12 oh, or 20 or 21, yeah. you'll see. So it's the old signs that are all caps. <laughs> So, so Nigel, it, it's just nice to know that I'm not all by myself traveling down the road. I'll be thinking of you whenever I see those inconsistencies out there. Awesome. You're going to be thinking of me a lot. <laughs> all right. It's lovely to talk to you all, all you folks again today. I really appreciate your time. And it's been fun. Yeah. To talk to you. So thank you. Man, signs go back easier to have on the toll road. All right. Well, at this point, we are a little behind. So I want to go ahead and jump into the um, Wyoming Capital Square art and exhibit policy. And just for everybody's knowledge, I think our intent today is to have Kevin walk through it so we understand what um, what this draft says, what this draft does and doesn't do. We will not be approving it or taking action on it today. And then I think the goal would be to, you know, provide initial feedback and then hopefully move something at our next meeting to actually send on to, to um, management council and, and SBC. Is that everybody's understanding? Okay, great. And Madam Chairman. Go ahead. Uh, as you go through this, could you could you go through how Chief Washaki ended up here? Because I don't know whether or not Chief Washaki would be accepted underneath this policy. So that's what I'd like to find out. Yes. If it was done today. Right. Yeah. So um, actually, before I could jump into this, uh, just a quick step backwards. I did message the state archivist. Um, and they do not have digital versions of the previous elected officials' photographs or portraits. So if there is a desire to, to put those into that kiosk, um, we all have to undertake that digitization project with them. So for the record. Um, so moving through this policy, um, yeah, I think the scope is pretty self-explanatory. Um, section two is based on you know, the recommendation that has already come from the subcommittee not to accept um, unsolicited proposals for permanent um, displays in the Capitol and kind of walks through the reasons, um, you know, with the, the primary reason being that all these spaces have kind of already been planned through this process for art or exhibits um, throughout the Capitol. Um, and then kind of lays out, um, I, I think this is thinking especially of the desire for artwork in the chambers that if they're, um, the state did elect a commission work for that, work through the existing structures, art and public buildings, there were to be additional exhibits that would work through the same process that this one has. So all of those structures are already in place. We're just referencing them here in the um, uh, in this policy. So then moving on to the section three, temporary displays. Um, we had a lot of conversation internally with the staff about this um, and, and whether there was a need, as you saw in some of the previous um, policies that we had looked at to set up a, a new advisory committee made up of elected officials and staff members to handle this. Um, and the more we kind of discussed it, there's two, really two primary avenues and spaces to have temporary displays in the um, capital. Um, the first is the existing um, uh, state building commission and state construction department policy that um, you can have that special use temporary permit, um, which is how, if you remember, the, the Humanities Council had an exhibit here uh, a couple years ago that kind of stood out in the hall here about the tribes. Um, it's how like holiday, temporary holiday um, exhibits are permitted in the Capitol building. So that would be the first kind of avenue for temporary um, display of art and artifacts and exhibits in the building. And then the second one, as we've already talked about, is this Capitol Gallery out here. Um, this is currently being managed by the museum. So there would be an option to submit for a full exhibit. So that's, you know, it's a big space. It's not really appropriate for just a, you know, here's a one portrait or picture that we'd like to have up. It's really full working with museums or curators or artists pull together like the exhibit that you see out there right now. Um, so that was kind of the, the, 
we thought it would be best to start like this is what currently exists and maybe that's sufficient maybe we don't need to set up yet another committee that's going to just be advisory to the oversight groups anyways um and just let it work through those existing processes um and kind of formalize that here um section four goes over, goes through some standards and guidelines for our um or proposals which is essentially the work needs to be relevant to the capital building to the history to the work that's already going on here it can't um detract from the visitor experience or obscurity of the existing artwork exhibits or artifacts um it's again not uh reiterating that it's not for permanent display all that is for temporary display and permanent display will be commissioned through the state or um you know loan from the state museum's collection um and then again within the capitol building uh emphasizing that we don't fix anything to the walls there which is already kind of established through the exhibits process we're doing right now um section five goes through the um the Capitol Gallery and just some of the um, the underlying thoughts behind why that was established, what the purpose of it is, and some of the guidelines for work that would be accepted or not accepted for there. Um, the emphasis here is on working with the museum and the Arts Council to develop proposals rather than necessarily having fully developed things coming in so it is more collaborative. Um, and then finally, section six talks about the existing policies and, and what's kind of being included um, by reference into this policy and um, and what's being superseded or replaced. You know, the, the Chief Washington piece sculpture is, is really interesting case, and I actually can't even speak a lot to it because that's a piece that's not currently in the museum's collection, and I think it would be appropriate to move that to the museum's collection. A lot of outdoor sculpt or a lot of sculptures were initially not included and then were later moved in. So um, we don't have the history on that piece that we do for some of the other sculpture pieces because um, as of right now, actually A&I is the, the owner of that piece as far as we can tell. Yeah, <laughs> Madam Chairman, I recall how it was funded was the, uh, the sculptor made these little 18 inch chief wash keys sold enough of those to actually make uh, fund the large one and it was a group of individuals that that wanted to uh you know uh bring the indian culture to the state capital and uh I, I don't recall there may have been some legislative action or something like that there may have been some cost here but primarily it was not funded by the state and so you know as we as this goes forward I would, I would, uh, I would hate to make a policy that would say, no, Chief Washington Key isn't going to be a permanent part of the, of the Capitol Square. So that's just my, I guess, cautionary note in, in the topic. And I would imagine that in a situation like that, that's why you have that um, that kind of joint oversight group with the Capitol, with SBC, and and uh, management council or whatever kind of group they set up between themselves um, to handle exactly situations like that, where it is a much bigger project with you know substantial amounts of funding needed to generate it. Um, I think what I would really you know like to get out a little bit in this conversation is is this structure the appropriate one to to kind of say we have procedures in place. And maybe you know we can come back with you know more detail on um, the SBC rules about submitting things and all of that. But this is the the procedures in place are sufficient for the needs that we have, or is there a need to set up some sort of alternative committee or subcommittee that would meet on a regular basis to review these sorts of things? Um, and then I think the second question I really have is looking at the standards and guidelines, is this capturing everything that we want to be able to communicate if we share this policy with somebody who wants to propose something or are there additional standards and guidelines that, that we would like to see? Well, Madam Chairman, I, I think in certain stances like this, I think the legislature can do anything they want to. This is policy. They can write a, a short statute and just say, yes, Chief Washer Key is part of the permanent collection of the statute or, or the, the that. But I don't, I, I'd like to have a policy that's at least flexible enough that 
that, uh, that people can submit for possible curation on a permanent level. We're only doing it on a temporary basis here, but maybe there's another, another, uh, I guess, uh, uh, step that would uh, of, of approval on a permanent basis that that we may or may not have in the policy report. So. And I might be able to address that a little bit, Madam Chairman. Um, one avenue that we talked about it and may just need to be bolstered is that if it rose to that level, as Chief Washaki currently does, that the process by which it would become a permanent um, display is the provision about it's either commissioned or accession, accession through the State Museum. So that was the idea about if you had another donation, if somebody wanted to give, like I said, the unicorn of a, the best mural you've ever seen for the chamber floors, you want to have an avenue to accept it, but it would then meet the museum's collection policies. So that's option one. We have also started reviewing other state um, capital preservation commission rules. And there is some language that we may be able to include in there without going to a level of a committee, but that what your avenue is, if you think you have a work of that um, level of significance to approach the state museum about. Okay. Madam Chairman, I'm just, I'm just you know, concerned that once we get to the level of hiring a full-time curator, that there's one person that says yay or nay. And that's where if everything's vested in one person, I think you can uh, have the possibility of not them representing uh, the values or the or the the will of uh, uh, the, the folks in Wyoming. So, anyway, those were just just cautionary things, and I think that we're going to have to, you know, do a little bit of research on Chief Washakie, make sure that we get get that one uh, uh, put put in the right direction wherever it needs to go. And I, yeah, I think those are all valid concerns. I think. I think I agree with the concept of not adding an additional committee because just speaking candidly, so we already have this the statute that we can't put permanent things without the approval of SBC and management council and the passage of a session. Am I so so we already have that, right? So we already we 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 I don't think we can permit additional things through policy that we are restricted from statute. But I don't see the need for an additional committee because I feel like when there is something that doesn't fit in clearly to an established policy, I, I understand part of the in intention of setting up a committee is to sort of keep politics out of it. It will end up in SBC and Management Council no matter what. So I don't think we need to suffer through a committee who is going to then be um, sort of, I'm not sure quite right, you know, um, that, that may just be, I don't want to say just for show, I, I, I understand that's not the intent, but that is potentially going to be overridden no matter what, you know, if anything is, is less than clear. So I, um, you, you are having to take care of Chief Washington. Is that? Well, yeah. we were able to get the sculpture cleaned and, and and waxed with funds through another project. But gotcha. yeah, I mean, really, it's, it's a little bit unclear. Okay. Well, I do have one question that um, the, this is called Wyoming Capital Square. And then in the scope of the policy, it says capital, capital extension and capital grounds. Can we be super clear on with what, so I interpret that as 26th to 24th central to carry. Is that, this is what that policy does. Just so everybody's clear. It, it, you might, well, I just, I would want to use the same terminology in the SBC capital facilities use policy. When, when it's saying, I think it'd be a lot easier for people if we use the same definitions. And, and maybe you have, because I haven't been over those lately, but to your point, um, it needs to be clear. Uh, I just think that consistency would help people. And, and Madam Chairman, I think we can go back through the statute and provide that. Um, there is some distinctions in 95106F between Capitol Square is defined as that this super block of which Herschler sits on, but Management Council and SBC's joint 
um, oversight is excludes Herschler. So it's the capital, the grounds. So we can add some language though that explains for the purposes of this, it's within the capital square for these um, portions of the square. So you're saying that already the SBC policy and statutes are using different terminology? You know, I'm not sure about SBC policy, but even within how statute, I'll have to go back and double check this. Um, but as I recall in statute, capital square is defined as the super block where the capital complex is defined as a 16 block area. But I believe that for oversight of art and artifacts and exhibits, I think it specifically says capital grounds and extension. But I think we can, I think we can add that specificity needed yeah. um, in the policy. Yeah, yeah just so we're re real clear. Does the um, museum reject much that is offered to it? Some, yeah. I mean, but it typically our review process, um, things that tend to get, that don't make it through and don't get accepted, it's usually either we've already got six or seven of these old sewing machines, or we don't need any more pianos, we don't even have a place to put them. It's that kind of stuff. Um, or if it, there's really no clear, the big, the biggest one is if there's really no clear connection to Wyoming. You know, we have, we do have offers of, of artwork that is, you know, represents the region, but you know, it's an artist who lived and worked and painted in Colorado, we probably would not accept something like that. Um, but if there is a strong provenance for Wyoming um, or a strong use in this example, you know, if there was a strong use for like, this would be perfect in this meeting room in the Capitol, we would tend to accept all of that. And, and the big decision on the museum side is, does it go in the permanent collection? Does it go in one of the, uh, used collections that we have like the capital art collection or the, the um legislative artwork collection well and i and i don't and i think uh, treasurer meyer's point about we don't want one person necessarily deciding but i do i mean the other I, you know and i mean this in the most loving way they're they're hoarders by nature that's their job right so i mean i think you lean you lean to accept whenever there is a you know, of course, I yes. see it's, I get the sense that any, you know, there's always would be a, a little bit of a leaning towards, okay. towards adding versus, versus not. Is that an accurate? Uh, yes, I'm, yes. Um, <laughs> yes, museums and, yeah. and museum employees, unfortunately, also tend to towards supporting. So okay. um, I, the other thing I would add to that is <laughs> currently the art and public buildings, um, you know, those pieces as their commission get added to the museum's collection. And that's really a, a formality because the, the decisions are all made beforehand and the piece is paid for and it's installed and then it comes to the collection. So if there were some piece like um, for the, cha the chambers, or for instance, to be commissioned or even to be solicited through a donation, we would treat it a lot like we do art in public buildings. You know, the decision about where it goes and what it's for has already been made and the, accepting it into the collection is just, so that it has a, a home and uh, in, uh, entity to care for it, um, you know, as opposed to, again, the Washakie sculpture, which kind of is lost in the mix right now. Okay. Public comment? Any other, any other questions or concerns regarding the policy? And again, just recognizing that if the goal is for us to actually approve something, Kevin's not a, he is fabulous, but he is not a mind reader, so. Mm -hmm. I think it is a solid foundation for us to work with. And then any, I mean, any any other real strong feelings we could email to you? Or, Absolutely. Okay, great. Thanks for your efforts, Kevin and uh, Wendy and others. I, I'm pretty confident that next month we can, you know, be prepared to forward something uh, of good value to the SBC. Okay. All right. Um, public comment. Do we have any public comment? Go ahead. We know who you are. Please identify yourself for the record. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Marguerite Herman, League of Women Voters. And just had mentioned three things real briefly. 
that as far as the signage, and I know there are a million variables you're dealing with, some aesthetic, some practical, and I would say stability, um, which was only mentioned briefly, should be right at the top because if um, some rambunctious child knocks it over, which it sounds like it won't, cause, but you never know that um, I think stability is, is has to be whether it's design of the base or how the weight is distributed, whatever. I just think it has to be right at the top. Um, also on the digital maps that we're showing, we didn't have access to the file, it was all grayscale. Will those be color coded? Will those be colorized? Because that adds a whole lot of information. Okay, I was. Yeah, I, those are almost like a placeholder, just while they're building the site, I think. But yeah, so they they will have color added to it. Okay, and then also the finally on the hearing impaired sign, whether you have text, icon, whatever. I would ask a hearing impaired person and say, "What did you look for? What is commonly understood? What do you need if you don't if, if you don't need the text? Or it's universally understood. I think that might help you decide whether to go." icon only or not. So I just would suggest you consult those guys. Um, and, and on the FM, and actually kind of got this from Richard a little bit, but um, the devices, the hearing, the FM, do people bring their own or, or do we have them? We can, we can check them out. And, and is that that's available where to get them? That information is, is clear where people can check them out. And, and Madam Chairman, um, the signage, we weren't planning to include that, but in our citizen's guide, it has it, it's on the website. Um, I neglected to mention that the auditorium um, also has that capability. So I'm not sure if it's on any um, SBC or ANI sites, but um, we probably as, as part of this effort should should make sure that we have that. You know, and, and where are space. those available? Just because I don't know, where, where are they? You just ask, um, oh. you, you just ask staff. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And they have so you'd ask the doorman in the galleries and you would ask committee staff like here, if, if that sign were on the door, it would be an indicator for a hearing impaired person when they come into the room, if it's not T coil and it connects automatically, if your um, hearing assistance device is enabled and you see the T, you know, you can just do it yourself. If you only, if you have an older hearing device or you don't have any hearing device, but you need sound amplified and it shows that symbol, it's your indication to ask that you know it's available, but um, it's it's um, not required uh, that it be out. It's just you know to seek out the and, and then and maybe yeah, that's one of those things if you're hearing impaired that standard procedure. Okay, so that's the extent of my comment. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Madam Chairman and members of the subcommittee, Richard Jarrett. Uh, just a couple of quick thoughts. One is um, we've got a terrific wildleg.gov website, and I think I heard that there's going to be some cross-pollination or communication between that and the event directory that's going to appear on the kiosks. <clears throat> I'd only urge that that we ensure consistency and between those two rather disparate um, uh, resources. Uh, so that if somebody goes to one and finds a conflict with the other, they're not going to start throwing arrows at, at anybody. Go ahead, Randy. And Madam Chairman, um, it feeds directly from the legislative website. So it but is I a direct mirror of, of whatever comes off the website. Nobody's populating it separately in this system. So if it's wrong, it'll be wrong in <laughs> it's all places. Wrong wrong. Oh, oh, oh. That's consistency, at least. <laughs> It actually serves a purpose. Uh, Mr. Garrett is the executive branch meetings, and that's what we need to work with. So that, those are the meetings in the auditorium. Those are meetings in West um, 5354. So we need to work together to display the executive branch meetings. So legislative meetings, yes. Executive branch to come. And then the other um, uh, suggestion, if I may, and it's falls under the category maybe of an unsolicited proposal. So I apologize for that. But, um, you know, if you come into the Capitol and see the portraits of the governors, you, you might come away with the impression that those are the only governors. And we also have limited wall space as it stands now. The previous governor's space, I believe, is more or less reserved. But when our 
current governor's portrait is displayed, who gets bumped? And I'm wondering if a composite of all of the governors um, could be displayed somewhere and all of the auditors and treasurers and state school superintendents, uh, we have those for legislators. And, and personally, as a matter of history, I'd love to see those pictures somewhere. And I know as I uh, go up and down the hallway here, maybe that's a little too frequently that I do that, so I apologize. But I do see people lingering and looking at those portraits of legislators or those composites. And it might be because they're looking for their aunt or their uncle or their grandma or their grandpas, as D.I. mentioned. But I think it'd be wonderful to, uh, if in a hundred years, somebody, if I may, could see your portraits, even within a composite. So unsolicited, but really that's- good idea. And I think we uncovered really a, a huge gap that we have that we don't even have those digitized. So we should probably do that before, you know, they, that, that, well, they haven't walked away yet, but you never know. Um, so thank you. I, that's a, that's a really good idea. I'm usually looking at hairstyles. <laughs> <laughs> well, and facial hair. Yeah. You know, yeah. They've got ties. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you very much. Yes. Any other public comments? Okay, hearing none, we have we have really uh I I feel like Representative Nicholas is <laughs> good at this sometimes. He can be like three hours behind and then all of a sudden he ends the meeting early. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that in the, in, in a, as a compliment. So we are we are not only back on track, we are we are we are potentially even a little bit, bit early. So so as you all heard, the due date for file stage is September 4th. Let's just recognize that for all intents and purposes, that's really September 1st, unless any of you want to be doing this on Labor Day weekend, um, because September 4th is Labor Day Monday. Uh, next meeting dates are September 26th. I get the impression that that's going to be a pretty robust meeting. Is that accurate? And DI will be on site? Yes. We think okay. Um, anything else for the good of the order, Mr. Co-chair? Well, Madam Co-chairman, thank you uh, for a great job today. Uh, again, I'm sorry I was a little late uh, coming to the party, but always appreciate the opportunity, even when it's from a distance, to uh, to work with all of you, um, including those who provided public comment. It's uh, you know, we can almost begin to see the light at the end of the tunnel. So I'm excited about that, Madam Chairman. I think uh, I think our work will pay off one of these days soon. So uh, I'll see all of you in the month of September. Um, thanks. Thanks very much. Thank you. Any other comments, concerns? All right. 